Today, I'm going to be talking about episode 19 of season 17 of Deadly is Catch. And in this episode, the three boats that are going to be in it are the Time Bandit, Wizard, and Cornelia Marie. This episode starts out with the Time Bandit, and the Time Bandit is setting their gear up by the U.S.-Russian border. While they're there, Jonathan's like, what the hell is that floating out in the water after they just set a pot? Jonathan pulls the Time Bandit up close to it. It turns out it was like a tree stump, probably from Russia, and it's a big tree stump, so Jonathan had the crew trying to recover it, because if a boat hits it, it's a bad day for that boat, because it could potentially puncture a hole in the hull, or seriously damage the propellers and rudders. So they were going to try and rescue it, but they were kind of struggling to grab it. So Freddy Mogatai, he runs into the bow of the Time Bandit, takes off all his rain gear and is barefoot and in his underwear, and he jumps into the Bering Sea in January or February, which is a very cold time to get into the water. The water's just above freezing. So Freddy's in there trying to get a rope around it, and then they throw him a life ring. They get him up, and Jonathan's like, Screw this, I ain't messing with this tree stump. So they get Freddy inside and warm him up and then go back to setting their gear. Then it goes to the Cornelia Marie. The Cornelia Marie in the last episode had set their pots in even deeper water than they'd been fishing before because all signs pointed to the grounds being very good with crab. They start pulling in their gear and they're getting blank after blank after blank. They tested one pot and then they went to deeper water and it was still a blank so they ended up pretty much every single pot getting zero crab to single digit numbers. Captain Casey gets a call from a uh, longliner. They don't know the boat but the longliners like had set their hooks with bait on them and they went to pull up that set and there was zero codfish so they thought hmm maybe there's a school of crab there. Could have been sand fleas but most likely not. They were like there's probably a lot of crab there, so Casey starts loading on their pots and they're gonna move about 30 miles away from where they currently are right now. Then it goes to the wizard. The wizard is up by the ice pack and they're in some not so nice weather. The weather is moving either southeast or southwest, keeping the ice pack away from, from their pots, which was about 25 miles away from the ice pack. They're hauling in their gear and they're getting about high 200s to 300 plus opelio crab per pot. So really working hard and really doing good with the crab numbers. Captain Keith decides to set the gear back one last time before they have to move their gear. While they're hauling in pots, they're dealing with massive waves that could take out a wheelhouse. And at some point towards the end of the Opelio season, <laughs> a wave did take it shot at the wizard's wheelhouse and blew him out last year. But I don't think we'll see that from what I've heard from a friend who's finished watching the season. So Keith saw a wave come over the port side bow and he let the crew know, hold on, get out of the way. And some of the crew who was standing by the by the sorting table did not have enough time to grab onto it and hold it. And they didn't even feel the wave going to happen. So they got washed back towards the wheelhouse after the wave hit. And there was a lot of water on the deck. Then it goes back to the Time Bandit. They're in an 8 mile area. And in this 8 mile area, it's a flat sandy bottom in a rocky, ledgy area. He's had success there before and he starts send his gear in there. He wants to top his tanks off before he has to go into town for an offload. And when he goes in for that offload, he wants to have a full boat. He doesn't want to come in short. So they are send their gear there and they'll haul it in a little bit. Cornelia Marie is starting to set their gear in the new grounds where the longliner captain had told there was possibly crab there. So they are setting their gear and the crew's been up for 30 plus hours. Captain Casey was like, we're gonna continue setting our gear. We're not gonna give them a fuel break to get food in. A couple of the greenhorns are getting really tired. They're not throwing the buoy as far as they should. If I was captaining right now, I'd bring them in to get fueled up, but they're gonna work uh, six plus hours to get all their crab pots off the deck. 
and onto the new crab grounds. Then it goes back to the wizard. The wizard is going through their gear and they're still on very good fishing. They're still battling storms with giant waves coming over the port side rail. Then it goes back to the Cornelia Marie and the Cornelia Marie starts going through their gear. It's getting blank after blank after blank after blank. There's no signs of sand fleas. The crab just aren't there. So this episode, the Cornelia Marie crew has been struggling with just finding any Opelio crab. They're stacking on their gear to move them to better grounds. Then it goes back to the Time Bandit and the Time Bandit hauling in their gear in the new grounds that they're on. And they're getting two to three hundred plus Opelia crab per or while they had a pot in the pot launcher, a pretty new hydraulic hose starts leaking hydraulic oil all over the deck. And it's up like this because they just knocked the crab out of it when it happened. So Freddy is unscrewing the bolt on, on the hydraulic line that's leaking. There was a lot of pressure on it, so when he got it detached, the pot launcher started going down on him, and that thing weighs 2,000 pounds, so if he had gotten trapped under it, it could have severely injured him or killed him. Luckily, he got out of there in time. They get the new hose on there, try it out, and get it fixed, and then get back to hauling in their gear. They're going to fill their boat up to bring it in for an offload. During the commercial, it was a salty tape. It showed Jonathan, he came across that stump again in his travels on the Bering Sea around his gear. So he brought out a old flares and he started shooting at the stump that was in the water. I think he missed it the first shot, but the second shot he got it. And he's like, yeah, take that, log. After that, it goes back to the commercial and they continue fishing and fill up their boat to bring it in for an offload. Then it goes to the wizard, and the wizard is all in, in their gear, and they're still on very hot fishing. One of the crew members was like, set it back, set it back, set it back, like that. And Captain Keith was like, no, we're not going to set it back. As much as he wants to, he's not going to risk thousands and thousands of dollars worth of gear from the ice pack. That is how episode 19 of season 17 of Deadliest Catch ends. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Deadliest Catch. Don't forget to hit the bell icon down below so you can be notified when I upload videos. Also, please share this video with your friends and family. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and don't forget to smash the like button. Thank you guys for watching. And if you ain't dreaming, you ain't living. Don't forget to dream big.